Hello, let's look at the Docker command line interface. This is the main control panel by which you will be able to control your Docker engine. The client is called Docker. In some systems, this uh, command is actually restricted and maybe you have to precede it by another command that elevates your user privileges in order to use the Docker command. Let's run something. In this case, let's run the hello world image. In a couple of seconds, we'll see what has happened. Okay, it's finished. What has happened? Uh, this image is extremely useful because it states the steps that have happened in order for this output to see. The first step is that the client, i.e. this command, has contacted the docker daemon to request it to run a container with the image. Because the image was not there, it pulls the image from the docker hub repository, which not only contains the hello world image, it contains many more images. Once the pull, the pull of the image or the download of the image is completed, the daemon has created a new container with that image and executed the command, by default the command that was uh, stated in the image, and streamed the output to the terminal so we can see it. Okay, has it really created the container? For this we will use the container verb and the list command. We want to list all the containers because by default the list will only list the active containers. This as a container has exit so it would have not uh, displayed it. We see that this container with this ID has executed this image uh, within the container the command hello was executed, it was created, it was exited, it has no ports and it has this name but we did not give it a name. Um, the Docker engine will give random names to your containers in order to uh, give them some uh, handy way to manage them. But if we want to run a container with a name that we want to select ourselves, we put the name tag. So now we run the same image, another container but the same image and unsurprisingly we see that it has the same output. Let's see the containers uh, and in fact, indeed, we see that we have a new container with a new ID running the same image, running the same command, but this time it has the um, name hello. And if we want to run another container with the same name, the system would not allow us to do this. This is handy because this gives us a way to manage our containers and know which containers are there and if there is already a running container that is running what is supposed to be running, don't interrupt it. Okay, so in order to run it again, we want to remove that container, uh, the container hello. So now that we have removed the container, the container is no longer there, not even in the acti inactive con containers, so we are able to actually run the a new container with the same name. Let's run something more interesting, like for example the uh, Alpine Linux distribution, which is actually a, a lightweight Linux distribution for uh, precisely tailored for uh, your image, uh, for your images, for your Docker. Uh, this image is very useful because on top of it you can build your applications. Uh, but in this case it hasn't done anything of interest, we have no output. Uh, let's see if indeed it has created a container and, and it has created a container. But we see that the default command is the bin s command, the shell command, and the shell command needs input. So this is because we need to run the Alpine in interactive mode. To run in interactive mode we need the uh, I and T uh, options and uh, now we have uh, uh, access to a shell inside the container. In fact we see there the uh, commands are executing inside the container and because these commands are executed inside the container I'm, be, I'm able to remove recursively with force and verbose the root directory. 
If I would dare to do this in my host, in my computer, I will be frying, deleting every file in my file system, including the commands. So in fact, I'm able to test what happens within this container. And uh, what happens is that now you are not able to do anything with your commands. The, the kernel is still running, the, the shell is still running, but I'm not able to run any other commands because the commands have disappeared. But now if I exit with control D, if I exit the, the um, container, I'm back at the host and I'm able to run things. In fact, if I were able to run, if I'm, uh, I want to run this image again, I will be able to uh, see all the commands and everything as it stated. And in fact, uh, because this has not ac uh, um, affected our host computer, I want to show you how also to uh, connect the containers to the host. So for this, we use the concept of volume and the volume is the uh, way to make persistent folders inside your container. Uh, we specify the volume with the minus V, we can put uh, any number of volumes that we want, and uh, we say the named volume or the folder in the host that we want this volume to, uh, to use as backend for the persistency. In this case, I created um, folder in temp and I want to map this folder to the temp folder in uh, the container. So when I run it, I, la I list the temp directory, there's nothing there. If I touch a f or create a file inside there, such as uh, my file and list it again, you see, we have created this file again. If I exit and list the host file, which is temp uh, temp test, we see that my file is there. Oh, so we've managed to, to uh, edit somehow uh, in a control manner from the container the host computer. In fact, if I run the docker uh, another docker container with the same parameters i will be able to see that in fact this is uh, persistent now i find the file there okay let's look at another kind of um, uh, dockers so let's look let's run docker run the httpd which is actually the apache uh, the apache service in inside docker uh, this will not work because uh, because i've already i'm already running a um, server uh, but well, actually it works because it's a uh, creating the container, but it's create, but it, this container is running in this IP, which is inside the container um, network. But I'm not able to access this. In order to access that, that service, uh, the, the Apache service, I need to expose some ports. So once again, I use the minus P for port, put the port in the host that we want to expose, and the port in the container that we want to expose. So now it's running, it's, it's still running on the same IP, but now this time if I go to a browser and go to the port 8080, oh, it works. And if I stop it and go back to the browser, it's no longer working. But uh, as you have seen, I have uh, it was uh, running in the terminal. So every output from the daemon, from the Apache daemon, it was uh, running directly to the terminal. So maybe for this kind of um, applications, we might want to run them in daemon mode. The daemon mode is the minus D, and what happens is that the container is started 
and it's running in the background. In fact, if we go to the Docker container list, it lists only the active containers, and as you see, the active container is the HTTPD, again, the Apache, uh, the Apache service. And if we go back to the server, it works. Let's do something even cooler. Let's run another web server, for example, the Nginx server, in, on another port. Puff, it's running. In fact, if I, if I go back to the browser and go to that port, now it's welcome with the Nginx uh, welcome message. Okay, so this means that I'm able to run any kind of service, manage my service with the containers and see how many services are there without knowing how to configure any of these services. I just know that they expose the port 80 locally, which I then can map to another port, and that's it. For me as a system manager, this, this, is, this is done. Finally, to stop your containers, this is the last basic command that we want to do, is to stop our containers. These are active containers that are running on the background, so we want to container stop the this one. Uh, yes, and we can also use the ID. Oops. I can also use the the ID instead of the name. Let's just paste this and copy this and paste that and now it's stopping both containers so if we list the, the active containers that are not there if we list all containers we see that in fact they, they, they have been stopped and now you have all the tools to run and manage your docker uh, engine.